A pleasure to have with us at ASCO 2012, Robert Sweetman, MD. He is the U.S. lead for lung tumors for Pfizer, and he also got the memo today about mixing browns with blues. I'm glad to see that. <laughs> Thanks, I'm happy to be here. Okay. Yeah. What is your opinion, doctor, of the landscape for, for treating lung cancers, not yeah. just lung cancer? Well, that's a good plural because I think it, it's uh, the message over the last couple of years is to make these significant gains in lung cancers, we need to not all treat them the like. And, and uh, we see an extension of that at this year's conference. Uh, the Lung Cancer Mutation Consortium a couple of years ago uh, did a molecular analysis and found out there's about 40% of uh, lung cancers that still have no molecular marker. This year they're reporting that's 35%. So in the interval year there's been a couple of new markers uh, been there that are sort of chipping away sequentially for that. And that allows opportunity for drug development to get those targets for that. An example of that is that uh, we have some data this year on ROS1 lung cancer, which was only described within the last several months uh, for that. And uh, our drug crizotinib, or Zalcori, actually also inhibits ROS1. And so Dr. Shaw from Mass General presented some fascinating data on 15 patients treated with crizotinib. And we see the same type of response that we've seen very early on for ALK-treated lung cancers with crizotinib. So that stuff's great. Specifically, what's new with Pfizer yeah. when, as it pertains to lung cancers? So we uh, continue doing well with Zalcori and start seeing still good responses for ALK positive lung cancer. As I mentioned, we have the Ross lung cancer uh, that we're investigating as well. And then we have a new PAN-HER inhibitor that's in phase three trials called Docomitinib um, that's looking at uh, not only EGFR mutated lung cancers, where there's some data on for that, but also uh, HER2 uh, amplified or mutated lung cancers, which is about another 5% of lung cancer, uh, where we that uh, felt to hit that target. And it's also a, uh, more general for people that don't have a molecular marker. So these are exciting times for us. Chipping away at molecular characterization of lung cancer you feel is very important. Why so? Yeah, I think, you know, historically we've, we've seen this 10 to 20 percent response rates for unselected targets. And if you look at uh, lung cancer improvement of overall survival since 1975, it's nearly a flat line. I think it's increased 4 percent during that period of time. Compared to other tumor types, it's, it's lagged much behind. I think part of that is we're treating it all such as one type of thing. So back to your initial comment, lung cancers is a, a more appropriate way to look at it. You have a background in pediatrics, you work with adult cancers. Fascinating for you to see how those two worlds, that which you describe as normally far apart, are coming together with crizotinib. Can you talk about that some? Yeah, it is a, it's a great side story here at, at, at ASCO and very heartwarming that, uh, as you mentioned, <clears throat> pediatric oncology and adult oncology were separate worlds, and they nearly never touched each other. And now they're touching and cross intersecting with each other over these molecular pathways. So for instance, there's a type of pediatric non-Hodgkin's lymphoma called anaplastic large cell lymphoma, where ALK is a target uh, for that. And in, in a certain subset of pediatric neuroblastoma, which is a very aggressive disease, also can be inhibited by ALK. And the children's oncology group with Dr. Mosse presented some fascinating uh, intriguing data yesterday of some very significant responses in, in, uh, in pediatric patients with those two tumor types. Based on your background, personal background with this, what do you think the significance or the potential of this really is? Yeah, I think, in, you know, you can look at tumors all by different tumor types and by different age groups like pediatrics for adults, or you look at them are the tumors being driven by a common molecular pathway? And so when you step back and really think about it, we have young children, six and months old, 12 months old, that are sort of the age group of neuroblastoma toward the younger age being treated with a lung cancer drug. You know? And you think of the significance of that, it can, it, it can just blow your mind. Yeah, and I think that that's amazing where it's at. And I think that this can really help pediatric drug development, which typically lags behind, and we're committed to to looking at uh, drugs for children, and a molecular pathway may speed, it, speed us there. So an exciting time ahead at Pfizer? Yeah, it's a, it's a great time. We look forward to seeing additional patients in, the, in ROS1 lung cancer being treated with crizotinib. And to, you know, we see just 15 patients here now, see how that looks like when we get more patients, and then exploring more in pediatrics to help that age group. Doctor, thanks for joining us and sharing your time, and best of luck to you and your work going forward. Thank you.
Dr. Robert Sweetman, MD. He is the U.S. lead for lung tumors at Pfizer, joining us at ASCO 2012.